Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Since you last heard from me, I took a complete two week break from all things poker. We went down to Puerto Escondido, Mexico, this little beach town for family vacation over the Thanksgiving holiday. And I believe we banned the word Rio. We banned all hand histories, all strategy talk, not allowed. We wanted to just have a complete break from poker. We spent most of our time eating really good food and lounging on the beach. And, uh, yeah, just recharging, reintroducing our skin to the sunshine. Now that we're back in Vegas, I'm super excited to get back to the grind, get back to making videos and taking you guys along the way. The World Series, for me this year was the worst World Series I've ever had so far. The World Series in general can take a toll on you, but especially when you have a really poor showing, it's really good to just take a break like that, remove yourself from poker, and just you know remember all the good things in your life, be grateful for what you already have, and then come back feeling rejuvenated and ready to grind. If you're interested in actual numbers, I'm gonna be posting the results at the end of this video, so stick around for that if you wanna check that out. So during that Thanksgiving holiday, I actually woke up to the exciting news that over 5,000 of you have now subscribed to this channel. That is crazy to me. But thank you, I'm really, really grateful for you guys watching, um, especially with this rough start that we've had so far in these videos. But to celebrate, I'm a big fan of celebrating even small wins as a tournament player, you learn to do that. Um, but to celebrate, I ordered this mini drone for for the channel. Yeah, once I learn how to use this thing, I will uh, I'll be super pumped to add aerial footage to all future videos. Once I start making more poker trips and even just regular traveling, I'm gonna bring this guy along, hopefully get some really cool shots. I might have just broken it. <laughs> Did not know that that was already open. You know, it's only fitting if like my first drone takeoff is like slightly like this. We'll see. All right, now that you're all caught up with me, let's get into the episode. Honestly, I was much more nervous than I thought I would be when I first sat down at this table. I haven't played 5-10 at the Bellagio in a really, really long time, so I'm definitely starting this session feeling a little out of my element. That all kind of changed when I just see the first few orbits, people just limping. I mean, they were limping a lot. I was so surprised. My first probably four or five hands that I even played was just some people limping, me isoing, and everybody folding. And that's the case here. Under the gun one limps, I'm in the hijack with ace jack offsuit and raised to 60. Small blind calls and the under the gun one player also makes the call. So three ways to a flop, it comes down king jack five with two hearts. When it checks to me, I check back with second pair. The turn is an offsuit six and it checks to me again. So now I'm feeling pretty confident in my hand that I have the best hand and I bet 140 into a pot of 190 just to get extra value from jacks and to charge any draws. Everyone folds though, and we take down the first hand where we see a flop. And this one big hand that we play, the under the gun player just limps. I make it 40 to go with sevens from the hijack, I believe. He snaps three bets to $140. This is an older gentleman and it seemed like he went in with a plan. He wanted to limp raise from early position. But I got pocket sevens, we're really deep, we're about 1500 effective. So I call this three bet. The flop comes out seven, five, deuce, rainbow. Welcome back to the cash games. He bets, we call. The turn is a 10, bringing it back to our flush draw. And all I'm thinking in my head is, how are we gonna get the rest of these chips in? Thinking about what bet size he could make and then what I could make it. And if he checks what I was gonna do. I had all this going in my head when I hear those magical words where he just says, Come on, man. He's got me covered, so it was like a $1,300 effective all in. 
He flips over pocket aces and we hold on the river. Really great start to that first hour of poker. Anyway, in this one hand, I open jack knight of clubs in the cutoff to 30 and the button makes it 90. He was short stacked. He had got set over set earlier and did not reload. So he had about 500 total to start the hand. I call, the flop comes jack, eight, four, rainbow. I check and he checks back. The turn is a seven of diamonds, bringing it back to a flush draw. I lead 120, he calls. The river is another four, four of clubs. I check and he thinks for probably 10 seconds before jamming all in for about 380, 370 or 380, which is almost a pot size jam. I don't know, when I was going through this in my head, I was like, okay, he was just checking back on the flop to get tricky with an overbear because he knows he's shorter stack, or he's truly just checking back to give up and then maybe picked up diamonds on the turn. Either way, I think he would play both the value side and the bluffy side this way on the river by jamming all in because now he counterfeits all potential two pairs that I could have, which aren't many. I just think that I probably can't fold top pair here, even though it's just jack nine. Tell me what you think. I ended up folding because I guess I'm just a little scared of monsters under the bed. Haven't played poker in a couple weeks, so I don't know. I ended up folding, but maybe I should be calling. Somebody across the table says, show the deuce. And instead he flips over an ace followed by a three, offsuit. Ace of hearts, three of spades. Pretty confused by that one, but uh, he gets the job done and he scoops that pot and I just look down at my stack wondering what might have been. Surprise, surprise, we get another limper from EP. We are in the hijack with ace king offsuit and ISO to $50. The button cold calls and the limper calls as well. Three ways to a flop, comes down ace, nine, eight with two hearts and a club. Uh, the early position checks, we bet $50, both players call. So three ways to a turn, which is the queen of spades. I'm gonna slow down on this one. I think three ways, somebody could have jack 10, they could have two pairs, just all kinds of stuff that we're losing to at this point. So we're gonna pot control and check it. The button checks back. The river comes a seven of clubs. And this time the original limper leads out $190. Pretty hefty sizing, to be honest, um, into two players. But with top pair and the way this hand played out, I think we can still be good a decent amount of time. I make the call. The button folds and we see the bad news. We're up against queen nine of clubs for a turned two pair. So we lose a little chunk there. So you know how this next hand starts. Low jack limps. We make it 50 from the hijack with ace deuce of diamonds. Might be a little light. Big blind calls 40 and low jack comes along. Three ways, once again, flop comes jack, four deuce, rainbow. We flop bottom pair, three way pot. When everyone checks to me, I happily check it back. The turn is an offsuit six. Big blind checks again and the low jack bets 40. So about a quarter of the pot. That could go either way on this one. It's three ways, so he's gonna have a stronger range, but he did bet really, really tiny. Looks like he's trying to get value with like a lower pair, but which I don't beat. But just in case he's not, I call, and now the big blind calls as well. So definitely think our deuce is beat, but kind of just went with it because of the price we were getting. The river comes in eight of clubs, big blind checks, low jack bets, $80 this time. Still pretty small, but like I said, especially with big blind over calling, we're not beating too much here. So I fold, big blind folds, and we will never know what low jack had. Maybe it's the tournament player in me, but I feel like I need to give you guys an update because it's been two hours in this cash game. So I started sitting down with 1,500. I think on on break, I'm, I'm about to say on break. After two hours, I think I've got about 1,000 more than that, about 2,500 in my stack. The table is really funny, by the way. You know, I thought it was kind of tight at first. I was quickly proven wrong because there was a guy who, who who's just like limping 10-8 offsuit, limping 4-deuce offsuit. I mean, I, it, he's limping 4-deuce offsuit, but then like folding sometimes. So I'm not sure what that's about. I think it's like kind of loosening up. There's a guy to my right who's pretty tilted. I don't know what's going on. I kind of feel like the first time when I first vlogged, just because of the cash setup, I don't have my camera in the usual spot. It's like on the table instead of on the rail. I have a 
ton of chips like in the way of the camera so it's almost like I'm vlogging for the first time again it's kind of fun but it is like I'm sort of like patting my head and like rubbing my tummy at the same time trying to like coordinate everything so to be honest I haven't been able to like pay as close of attention to what's going on at the table as I would like to because I'm, I'm constantly seeing if I even am getting the hands on film so the nerves have kind of settled down because I was kind of nervous before starting and yeah we'll see how it goes from there so I only ended up playing for about another 45 minutes but these couple hands happened I opened ace queen of clubs from the hijack the same guy that had that ace three offsuit earlier three bets to 80 he's still short stacked the button is fishy I'll just go ahead and say it and he cold calls I call and keep him in. Me and him are really, really deep. We're like 2,600 deep. I call. The flop is ace eight deuce with a club, rainbow. I check, the three better bets 80 again. The button calls, I call. The turn is an offsuit six, so it's a complete rainbow on the board. Checks around. The river is a king of diamonds. The three better is the only one who could have ace king here, unless the button somehow did not four bet the ace king just to uh, protect myself i'm gonna check cut off checks button checks we're the first to flip over our hand and it is good both players muck and we win a medium-ish size pot this one is not a limped pot because it folds to me yay i opened a 30 dollars with ace jack offsuit just the button calls I'm pretty sure almost every hand in this hand history has involved this guy. Anyway, he makes the call. The flop is 873 rainbow. We see bet $30 could be meh, but it's a small sizing, so whatever. We have an inkling that he's playing a lot of hands pre-flop, and I think he could just fold a lot on this flop. Button makes the call. Turn is an offsuit four. Check, check. River comes a six of spades. So now there's four to a straight on board. I check once more. He bets a hundred and I pretty quickly fold. Then the guy that we got with the set of sevens earlier opens the button to 30. We're in the big blind with ace king offsuit and make it 140 to go. He makes the call pretty quickly on a flop of 855 with two diamonds. I see bet 70, so about a quarter pot. He calls. The turn is a king of diamonds, so the flush gets in there. This time I check because I think he's pretty straightforward. He checks back. The river is an offsuit three, so now I 100% have the best hand. If not, you know, so be it. I bet 350 because after he caps himself on the turn, I can go bigger on this river and get a lot of value from pairs worse than mine or for a worse king if he ever checks that back on the turn. Doesn't really matter what size I go, he pretty quickly folds and we take down another small-ish three bet pot. So I gotta say, even though the cash game broke pretty early, only after like three hours, I was pretty happy with booking such a solid win. I know I ran hot, but you know, a win is a win and it felt really good. And as promised, I'm going to uh, just go through some results real quick. What's happened so far just on the vlog. The weekend that I started playing was the first weekend of September. Since then, I have bought in total buy-ins for attorneys are $30,348 and total cash outs is $8,502. Not great. So that's a loss of $21,846. And then with today's cash game, I um, won 1565 So total, 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 total number on the vlog is down 20281 across like 170 hours of mostly tournaments. I know it sounds like a big number, and it is. Don't get me wrong, it's a big number. But, you know, if you bank a tournament, you usually are making more than that. And now all of a sudden you're profiting on that uh, 170 hours. So... You know, you're always one score away from some good news. All right, so don't worry, just because the World Series is over, there's a lot coming up for this channel. I plan on adding a lot more cash game vlogs and a lot more content live. So I'll be streaming online MTTs, hopefully once a week, starting by the end of the year. I hope I can get that set up for you live on YouTube and I will 
be playing a lot more cash games because I find them personally to take a lot less time to vlog. I'm gonna end this video on that note. I'm very, very excited for what's to come. I hope you are too. If you've made it to the end of this video and you haven't yet subscribed, please consider hitting that button. It helps the channel uh, reach new audiences and it helps the people that already like poker vlogs see this one as well and maybe follow the journey, you know, come along with us for this ride. So that's all for now. Good luck at the tables, you guys, and I will see you for the next vlog.